Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the reindeer hand sanitizer on the single needle machine. Now if you tuned in yesterday, I released a video on how to make the Santa Claus, but we did that one on the EM1010 multi-needle machine. Today we're going to use a single needle machine. These are assembled pretty much the same way with the exception of obviously where the applique steps are. But on this one, we have a smaller tab that we're going to do. So you can do this one on a four by four hoop if that's what you have. If you have a larger hoop, you can do this um, design, but you can add the tab. Both are included in the design file and I'll have everything linked in the description below the video. So let's get started. I'm using the Janome 500E single needle embroidery machine for this project. We are using the Designs by Little B Rudolph Hand Sanitizer, the smaller version. So if you have a four by four hoop, I believe this will fit. I'm using my small five and a half by five and a half inch hoop. So this should work perfectly. And if you're not sure, just print out the design. If you have any software that will print them out and just double check. So we've got plenty of room. Now I always like to go through my stitch sim simulator in Chroma software and both print these out and kind of just go through so that I know exactly what's going to happen when. And I also always mark like here is where you're going to add the fabric and here is when you're going to add the pocket because inevitably I get interrupted when I am using the embroidery machine in between steps. So it's easier when I come back to it to know what I need to do. So if you have the ability to print out your designs and the steps, I highly recommend you do it. Oftentimes digitizers will include it in their file, the step out. I don't think it's in this particular one, but a lot of times you can get that right with your file. It just comes in a PDF and you can print that out. So what you're going to need for this project is you're going to need two pieces of either vinyl, I'm using cork, you can use whatever you want, but it needs to be big enough to cover the design. So Mine are, uh, mine are cut roughly to four and a half by five-ish. Uh, the design itself, it's about, if you cut it to four by four, you'll be fine. And then you need a piece of fabric for the applique for the mask. I'm gonna use this fun, um, I think this is, it's considered a faux leather, but it's actually furry. So I thought this would be a really cute kind of trendy leopard mask on our reindeer. So that's what I'm going to use. And then you need another piece. You'll see the pocket stitches right here. That needs to cover from there to the bottom of the design. So my piece is cut to about three by three and a half. And that should work perfectly fine for the pocket for the hand sanitizer. You're going to need your threads. I'm going to use a combination of black, red, and brown. I've already got the black on the machine. I'm going to be using a black bobbin. You're going to want your scissors and you're going to need an eyelet for, to close the top of this. And we'll get to that towards the end of the video. I have gone ahead and hooped some stabilizer in here. I believe this is, yeah, this is cutaway. You can use cutaway or tearaway. I just happen to have this in the sheets and it fits perfectly in this hoop. So I decided to use the cutaway, but you can use whichever you want. Some people prefer the tearaway because um, this can show in between the layers a little bit. I don't mind it, but that's totally up to you. So let's go over to the machine and we'll stitch this out. So we're at the embroidery machine. The first thing we need to do is get our file. So I'm gonna click the X, I'm gonna click on the file. I'm gonna click on the flash drive. I always then click on the up arrow. This will just get you out of any folder that it may have opened up in. Otherwise you can lose track of your design. So I'm going to quickly scroll over and search for my design. Oh, it's right here. It's the small Rudolph. I'm going to click OK. So he is right there on my hoop. I can rotate him if I want. I don't need to. I'm using a square hoop, so we should be fine. So I'm just going to click OK says keep your hands clear and the hoops going to this is going to move into center position this part right here so let's move the camera and so you can see what's going on all right so we're going to click okay I always let this move before I put the hoop on I have a black bobbin and black thread in which is going to be my first step I'm going to add my hoop just like so and if we look at our 
cheat sheet. It shows the first thing is the placement stitch. So we're going to click OK. And I'm going to hit start. I'm going to hit stop right after it starts and cut the tail. Oh, tells you to lower the presser foot. All right, so now I'm going to grab that tail, cut that off. And hit start. So after that first step, that's our placement stitch, we need to add our cork. I went ahead and sprayed the back of it with the 505 temporary adhesive. So I'm just going to place it under here, pat it into place. And again, we're going to hit start and I'm going to hit stop right after it starts so that I can cut this tail off. <laughs> So this is step two, which is the mask, and it's going to serve as a placement stitch for our applique. Okay, for step three, we need to add our mask applique fabric. So I'm going to just place that on there, get that thread out. On my machine, I can just kind of tuck that thread up on the thread cutter, go in the opposite direction, and that kind of keeps it out of the way. So I'm just going to, I didn't spray this, I'm just going to hold it into place over here on the side, but you can spray it if you want. So again, we need to raise the presser foot to tell it to go to the next step, and click start. Stop it, flip that thread, and start. Right. Once we have our placement stitch, we're going to remove it from the machine. Keep it in the hoop though. I'm going to try to do this over here, but we're just going to reach inside and we're going to clip as close to those stitches as we can without clipping in to them. I'm going to keep the integrity of the stitch. So I'm just cutting really close to those stitch lines. These bent scissors really help with this step, especially if you're doing applique. Allows you to get in there without trying to work around the bend of the frame. So you can see I've got that trimmed right around the edge. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my thread back out, attach it to the machine. And now we're ready for the next step, which is step four. And that's our satin stitch around the edge. And we'll press foot down, hit start, stitch a couple stitches, stop it, flip the thread. and start it. So that's the end of step four. It's time to change our thread. I do want to mention when you are changing your thread on a single needle, cut the thread at the top and then pull the thread out. Don't pull it this direction pull it away from you. All right, so we're gonna change the thread. Okay, so I've got my red thread going, so we're ready for the nose. We're gonna stitch a couple stitches, stop it. Trim it, 
and let it finish. Okay, now the next step, we just did the, the red for the nose. The next step is the eyes, which I wanna do in black. And then we're gonna do the antlers, which is brown. And then the rest of my steps are all black. So in order to save myself a color change, I'm going to skip forward to step number seven on the Janome and do the brown. So again, we're gonna cut our thread from the top and pull it out. So again, I'm skipping step six and I'm gonna go to step seven. So here it's showing step six. All I'm going to do is click the forward arrow. I have to raise the presser foot to do that. And it's gonna to go to number seven. So now I can do that and then I'll go back and get number seven. So we're done with the brown and then remember we got to go back and get step number six i'm going to pull that thread through and the rest of our steps are in black so that just saved me a thread change you can go through them in in the correct order i was just trying to keep it one less thread change for the video so back at the machine, we need to go back and get step number six. So I'm gonna hit the back arrow, there's seven, there's six. So then I can go ahead and hit start. So we've already done step seven, which is the antler. So again, I'm gonna raise the presser foot and go to step eight, which is when we put the backing on. So we're going to remove this from the machine. There's some threads there. We're gonna turn it over and you can trim this all up. I'm not going to do it for the sake of the video, but I would trim your threads right there. And then you're just going to add your backing piece, make sure that it's covering all of your stitches. And then we're going to add it back to the machine. I'm just using painter's tape to hold it on there. You can use spray adhesive if you want. You could use the 505 if you want. And again, we're going to hit start. Step nine is the pocket placement stitches. So we're just going to hit start. Oops, gonna raise the presser foot every time. Okay, so we've got our pocket placement. We're gonna remove it from the machine. You're gonna turn it over and this guide and this guide are those two stitches that it just stitched and that's telling it where you put your pocket. Now I am going to take a moment and trim this off. This is all stuff that could get in knots and this is going to show. All right, so now I'm going to take my pocket piece and line it up with those two marks and let's use the straight edge of it. That would be good. All right, and I'm just going to use some painter's tape again. Tape that into place. I'm just using the painter's tape so that you can see it better. But you can use scotch tape. Whatever works for you. All right, so you want to make sure that it's about up to those marks and that your bottom stitches are covered. All right, put it back on the machine and this is our final stitch. Oops. 
Okay, we're done stitching. Okay, I'm gonna remove it and take it over to our desktop so we can finish. So we finished stitching and now we're just going to remove it from the hoop. Put our hoop aside. You can remove your tape. If you use tear away, you can go ahead and tear this out. I used cutaway, so I'm not going to be able to cut mine or tear mine out. But if you use cutaway, just cut around it. So now you just want to cut as close to those edges as you comfortably can without compromising the integrity of the stitch. I am using a, I don't know, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, but whatever you like, do you do you. Make it yours. And around these antlers, I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut around each little piece. Notice that I am turning the project, not my scissors, as much as you can. That'll give you a smoother cut. Also, the less that you open and close your scissors, the smoother your cuts are going to be. But again, if you want to go in between all these antlers and really make it detailed, absolutely go for it. I highly recommend that these scissors, they cut like butter. But if nothing else, just use a nice pair of sharp scissors. And try to keep your scissors straight so you're not cutting like this or you're going to cut the back stitches and you don't want to do that. You want to try to keep them horizontal. All right. I wasn't doing a video. I would take a little more time, but... So once you have him all cut out, you can see you've got your little pouch for the hand sanitizer to fit in. You can give it a try. I think this holds both styles, the short one and the long one. So there's the long one. This is Bath and Body Works. And we can try this style. That one works as well. Either one, just fine. This is the one we made on the multi-needle machine. Super cute. Made the same way. I used a crushed velvet right here on his hat. It's so cute and soft and fuzzy. This one I think is really cute with the furry face mask. All right. So we need to put our hole in here. See a little touching up I need to do on my cutting. I'm probably the world's worst cutter. There we go. Looks a little better. All right, so we need to put our eyelet in. So I'm using a crocodile. You can use uh, this. I have this little tool kit that has eyelets in it, but you can use this entire kit. This is a hole punch. This is an eyelet setter, but I find this is actually the easiest, and I'll link this in the description below, but this is the easiest eyelet setter. So up here is a notch to punch holes, and here's one. So this one is a smaller hole. This one is a larger hole. I'm going to use the smaller one and you just place it right inside. I'm just eyeballing it. If you want to mark it, you can. And then I kind of just twist it and I have the hole for the eyelet. Bada bing, bada boom. It's okay. I need to hang it on by a thread there. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a hole there for the eyelet. And I'm just going to push the eyelet through. And I don't know, this one has different colors of eyelets. Maybe I'll try the black one. And I think I need my hole a little bit bigger, so let's go with the other one. All right, so I'm going to put the black eyelet through the hole, just like so. And then on the crocodile, if you're not familiar with it, there are little numbers on here and it's, they're really hard to see, but on this rotates to different sizes. 
You want the one that has A and 1 for this particular kit, which is a larger eyelet. You're going to take the eyelet and you, the colored side is going to go on the little post side of the crocodile. So it's going to go like that. You're just going to rest that post right in the middle of the eyelet. You can see that. So the black part of the eyelet is on the post and then you're going to squeeze and your eyelet is perfectly set. These work so well. So then I'm going to just take a little jump ring and again if you wanted to do the lobster style clasp like this, she also has that included in the file. I just did this style for those of you that have uh, smaller 4x4 hoops. You do need a five by seven hoop to do that one. So there you have it. You put your hand sanitizer in it. And how cute is he? I love these. I think they are so cute. I think these are a lot of fun, really cute. And I'm making a few for the mailman, the Amazon man, the UPS man, and a couple of friends. If you're interested in the Santa Claus version, be sure and check out the video that I released just prior to this one. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Never stop making. Here are some other videos you might enjoy.